This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, uh, good night, Shabbat Shalom. This is um, part two of our previous discussion about whether a doctor has the moral obligation to disclose confidential information if it could potentially be um, of benefit to someone else. On Wednesday, we discussed the very sensitive issue, and uh, for full appreciation of the shear, I refer you back to Wednesday night shear. But uh, I'll give you a very brief executive summary. Basically, we discussed a number of situations where a doctor or professional, be it a um, medical professional, a psychologist, knows uh, confidential information about a patient, whether it's a terminal illness that's being kept quiet, whether it's a severe psychological condition, and they're treating the patient, but then they happen to get wind that this patient is in, in the parsha, is going out. And here you have a young woman or a young man who potentially could um, get engaged to somebody who has a severe medical condition or a severe psychological condition. And on the one hand, the, patient, the doctor has the moral obligation to protect his uh, patient's client's confidentiality. On the other hand, he also has the halachic obligation of loisamid al damreyecha, which according to the Rambam, the way that Tzitzel Yezer and the Chalkos Yaakov understand it is expanded that any time you see your, uh, your friend about to enter a very precarious situation, you're obligated to save them. It's not only if their life is in danger. And the Tzitzel Yezer and the Chalkos Yaakov both said very emphatically that the doctor is obligated to disclose information about a, a patient, a terminal illness, or a psychological condition because Nebuch, What's, or let's say a doctor knows that, that the girl is not capable of bearing children and this is confidential information, but what's the poor guy going to do? He's going to marry her and then he's going to be stuck in a very difficult situation. It's not so easy necessarily to get a divorce, not so easy to get a heter meyer abonim. And what does this doctor do? And the Tzitzel Yezer said very clearly, he's obligated, he's morally obligated to disclose the confidential information. And the Tzitzel Yezer says, it doesn't matter that he swore when he became a doctor, he swore the Hippocratic Oath. It doesn't matter if he took a specific oath to this client that he's not going to disclose. Basically, the Shvuah is not Chal. And even if it is Chal, says the Tzitzel Yezer, he needs to be Mater, the Shvuah. Basically, the overriding con- uh, factor, according to the Tzitzel Yezer, is you've got to save the patient. We had two questions on Tzitzel Yezer. One was based on the fact that in this country, if a doctor discloses confidential information, he loses license, he loses job. Now, we sort of presuppose that a job is worth more than a fifth of your assets, which I think is reasonable. And in that case, we ask the following, that we know a person has to give up all their money not to violate a lav in the Torah, but a person only has to give up a fifth of their money not to, um, a fifth of the money to fulfill a mitzvah saseh. Right? Remember? The Allah is you only have to give up a choy of your money to fulfill a mitzvah saseh. You have to give up all your money not to violate a lav. On the one hand, loisamad al-dam reyacha is a lav. So l'chayro, you should have to give up your job and give up all your money not to violate. On the other hand, we spoke out from the Rashba that the critical difference between a lav and a naseh is a lav you violate actively with a naisa, and a, and, a, and a nase you violate passively, Sheva al In that case, this lav of Leisamad Adam Reyacha is one of the only lavin that you violate passively. So maybe for that lav, you only have to give up a fifth of your money. Which Rabbi Kivager makes such a case, he quotes the Shal Sutshuvas um, Chavis Yoyer, who says for a lav that you violate passively, you only have to give up a fifth of your money. And in that case, we asked on the Tzitzel Yezer, in our country, would a doctor have to jeopardize his job by disclosing confidential information just to save somebody from a difficult situation? That was one question we asked. And another question Rav Yosef raised is, by disclosing this information, then you're basically weakening the whole institution of medicine because patients will be hesitant to disclose information to their, care, to their caregivers and doctors will not be able to ac- um, properly treat their patients if all the information is not given. Okay, so um, I told you I thought I heard from Rav Asher Weiss that he has a different opinion. So I went back to hear the, uh, I found the uh, recording and he in fact didn't say he's disagreeing with the Tzitzel Yezer, but he disagreed with the Tzitzel Yezer. And then I realized, you know what? If he did, he probably wrote it somewhere in the tshuva. 
and I found that as well. So that's why I want to read to you um, what Rav Asher Weiss writes. But he draws a very interesting distinction. He feels a doctor is not obligated to give up his job to disclose information. And he also writes very clearly this argument that it would weaken the institution of medicine by disclosing this information. But he makes a very fundamental distinction between someone being harmed and someone's life being in danger. And he, basically he says that if someone's life will be in danger, then of course you have to give up all your money. You even have to give up your life, Right? In other words, you're allowed to desecrate any mitzvah in the Torah to save a life. Life takes priority. So if a doctor knows information, let's say a psychologist or psychiatrist knows somebody is lethal, someone is a serial killer, so what's he going to say? Well, I'm entitled to protect my job and not disclose the information, but people's lives are on, at the stake. No, you're not, you're not entitled to do that. Even though you can make the case you're weakening the medical practice well, that wouldn't be weak. Maybe not. I mean, maybe not. People would expect you to do it. On the other hand, if it's just a matter of somebody in a very, very compromised situation, somebody falling for a person who is not child-rearing, which is a terrible thing, child-bearing, which is a very harmful thing, but maybe the doctor has the right to protect his, his license. But legally, in this country... There is, um, if a doctor knows um, classified information, confidential information, that could be harmful to somebody, he is allowed to present it to an ethics committee, who that ethics committee will then decide whether this is something that needs to be known. And if they deem that it, this is worth, uh, that, it's, that it, it's important for the doctor to say, they will allow the doctor yeah, to disclose it. Ethics. That's not like if a woman is childbearing or not childbearing. Well, medical in terms of, they will decide... May, under these terms, that maybe the doctor will be allowed to disclose it to the potential spouse. And that would protect him from, and that would protect him from, uh, from losing his job. And whatever, and right. Losing the so let, let's read very briefly the particular case that he gives. And he sort of uh, writes um, very cogently the realities of, of, of um, disclosing classified information today in America. Um, so the particular case is. The Tzitzel Yehuda was where? Yehuda Waldenberg. He was the postdoc of Shari Tzedek Well, He passed away approximately 10 years ago. So it would have been all modern Israeli law. What? It would have been modern Israeli law because that applies You would to think, you would think, you would think, but he clearly writes under all circumstances the doctor has to say. He didn't care. Yeah, he didn't... Uh... I don't mean to be facetious, but can we apply this principle yeah. to national security matters? where people's lives might be in danger. And if you know something, you have an obligation to tell. Well, if you know so that you're... You your secrecy and you have a security clearance and you, you know... I don't know. If you know the guy next sitting next to you in shul is a secret, you know, is dangerous well, to the country. Well, let's see the way he says it. We're talking about, let's say somebody knows genetic information. In other words, let's say you're a geneticist, you're, you're a chemist, biochemist. Um, my father was a biochemist. Let's say you know somebody carries a genetic disorder, ge right. genetic um, abnormality. So now if it's recessive, it's not really an issue. But if it's a dominant trait, which that means 50% of the offspring would be affected by it, do you now have to go and, and warn any potential kala, hey, you know, uh, make, sure, make sure you get the, the chasen tested. So here, here's the case. This is Shal Sichu's Min Chas Asher, Rav Asher Weiss, Chelek Beis. And I happened to hear somebody once ask him this question. I happened here to hear him say this. Bidvar Bachor ben Sheva Esrei, you have a 17 year old boy, Shenizgale Etzloi, poor for Chadar and Belev. Basically, there's a murmur in the heart, there's a hole in the heart. Basically, on this condition, there is a, a uh, very high concern for heart. Abnormality, and there's a there's a concern for sudden heart uh, cessation. Yeah, they they uh, basically they put in a, a, a DFB a defibrillator. If the heart stops, it, it emits an electric shock to get the heart going again. It also regulates the heart rate. 
Doctors say if this guy has it, this is a genetic disorder. 50% his siblings also have it. And this problem could strike them at any time. The medical field says if you have one brother who finds that he has this problem, every all the other siblings got to check themselves. The doctors recommend that the first cousins have a 10% shot of having this. They should also check themselves. But the, you know, the father of the family... He doesn't want to tell the people the family because if people know that this family carries this disease, for shaduchim for that family is uh, is faint. You know what are the what are the likelihood anyone's going to marry into that family? When is this shala written? You know, it's got to be written quite recently. Because today, I mean, they insert those um, what do you call those things? Regulator. There's a word I forget. Pacemaker. Pacemaker. Yeah, but still, what girl's going to want to marry a guy? It's so common. With yeah. a 17 year old. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, no, if a, a, a young. Sure nowadays in the world of Shaduchim, if there's anything at all, you say. <laughs> yeah, well, right? Nobody's going to go into that. What about the table? With any other Shish, Bael. One second. Right? And. Um, Shopping cart. Never, we're never going to show. The Dvar of Kaloid, any Yadu, she is by His opinion is if we don't know there's a problem, then let's keep it under the rug. Let's not drum anything up. Otherwise, it's going to present a problem for Shaduchim. Because if we check the other kids and we find they have a problem, forget it. So, first of all, does he need to check the other kids? Does he need to tell the first cousins? But with the Shaila that we're going to get involved is as the medical professional, as the doctor, and the father doesn't want to say, is the doctor obligated to tell the first cousins to check themselves to prevent a future a catastrophe? Because after all, there is some degree of concern, and you know, 10%, that, that uh, this issue exists. Okay, so. Isn't it a matter of Kikur of Nefesh if he does say something? Yeah, on the other hand, though, on the other hand, the doctor is violating the code of ethics of uh, re- releasing confidential information. Right, so that's the shaila. The shaila is whether a doctor has is his first obligation to his patient to protect the privacy and confidentiality of the patient, or his obligation to society at large. So Rav Asher Wai says again, this is a continuation of Wednesday Shir. Is he allowed to, or maybe not? And if he's allowed to, is it a chiyuv, or is it only rishos? Well, says Rav Asher Weiss, Hine b'medinois ha-mesukanois shab'olam. Basically, in uh, civilized countries, not sure which ones he's referring to, ha-choyk mechaiv es haroi filishmar al-soidi es Law requires, the HIPAA laws, to uh, Be quiet. Keep, keep things quiet. Choyk ze noyad lishmar al-zuchus ha-chol etzina u-partiyos. This law protects the privacy of the patient. On the other hand, it doesn't just protect the privacy of the patient. It also is designed to sort of protect the, the ill so that they don't refrain from going to the doctor. Because if he has to worry, if I go to the doctor, my kid's not going to get a shidduch. Right, that's going to be the the next discussion. It's not only a doctor. Any profession, be it an attorney, be it a clergy, be it a rabbi, if someone discloses to you private information, right? If someone discloses personal information, psychological information, um, legal information, you're not allowed to reveal it. However, besides the Isra Klali of Lashon Har Rechilos, and besides what Chazal say, you're not allowed to, right, the halach is you're not allowed to be Megal Asoid, right, if somebody says, I have a secret, don't tell anybody, <laughs> it's also to tell. 
to Nabi Yitzhak and Hara. I'll tell you more than that. If someone comes and tells you information, you're not allowed to tell anybody else. It's Lash and Hara. Even if they don't say, I'm warning you, don't. Somebody comes, you say, you know, my son is getting engaged tonight. You're not allowed to tell anybody. But they didn't tell me I'm not allowed to tell anybody. You're not allowed to tell anybody. It's halacha. Rabbi Yana writes two reasons. First of all, it's a violation of tznios. It's not modesty. The same way you're not going to walk down the street, Aero in the area, right? Man, would anyone wake up in the morning and say, you know what? Not putting on clothing today. But do not have a lady. Yeah, but it's, you know, I'll do that. It's, it's a lack of tznios. Well, it's lack of tznios. Somebody told you something personal. It's a lack of tznios to tell somebody else about it. So here you have the, the patient told you not to say. The law says not to say. The halacha, it's lashon hara. It's a lack of Now, we don't find halachically that a doctor has any greater obligation to protect confidential information than anybody else. To protect the secret. However, says Rav Asher Weiss, Dina there is a force here of Dina de Malchus Dina that the law of the land, even though halacha does not demand that a doctor be more protective of personal information than any other profession, but the legality, whether it's U.S. law or Israeli law, does require one to abide by that, that particular law. And it's not against halacha. The law wasn't made to... Right. And Dina de Malchus Dina, says Rav Asher Weiss, is not only monetary law, Sure. But in any guideline that has benefit to society at large, if the government issues a law to enhance the running of society, which this does, this is protecting the medical field. Especially a law which is founded, this is not a, a law based on idolatry, not a law based on promiscuity. Th- this is something which is reasonable. This is something that promotes rational justice. He says, look at what the Chassam Soifer writes. This particular law Chassam Soifer is talking about, since it's in line with Torah rationale, some servers discussing a case where the government maxes out, caps out, the city could have this number of grocery stores, this number of fish stores, this number of... And the reason they do that is so that those who maintain that business should be protected and those uh, people should not be able to infringe on it. Says so some server, look, if they would come to us, we would make the same law. That you, you can't just indiscriminately open up a certain number of shops. So that has to be abided by. And because of this, Svara says, Rabbi Asher Weiss, so some server paskins, that Dina de Malchus Dina applies. So therefore, under these circumstances, a doctor must abide by Dina de Malchus Dina and not, and not reveal, uh, disclose confidential information. However, Says Rav Asher Weiss, Pashut, the Mamakum Shei Sakana Laacherim, Ein Lischashiv Klal B'Schus Adam Lepartiyas. Obviously, if it poses a physical danger to somebody else, you don't have to be concerned about this guy's particular right for confidentiality. He comes to you, Doc. Hey, Doc. Every morning I wake up, I have this urge to pick up a, a weapon and shoot people. What do you think I should do? So now, now the doctor's not going to tell people. He's not going to tell the federal government because he has a, you know, the HIPAA laws. I mean, got to protect society. Pshita shi'idcha inyanzeh. And says Rav Asher Weiss, not only does it push off the patient's right to, for confidentiality, it pushes off, it says Rav Asher Dina Demachus Dina, Agrees that under these circumstances you need to disclose it. A clear and present danger must be revealed. What's a psychology? Yeah, very, yeah. Not bad. Gila es Ozna, Shalach Lurzech Adam. Let's say he says, hey, hey, Doc, uh, you know, the Doc's lying there, he's lying there on the couch, he says, Doc. I just should know, after this, I'm going to go grab a coffee and then go shoot someone. So the doctor says, what can I do with my mouth? I'm not the coffee. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. 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 However, says Rav Asher Weiss, what if it's not a life and death situation? 
What if it's just harming someone? It could harm someone medically or nezagacha. You got to go to the ethics committee. Now, I don't know that there is such a thing in America, maybe only in Israel. I presume there is in America. I'm an ask the Kabbalah Ishur Lagas. You gotta be like get a certificate to, to reveal the information. Certainly the ethics committee does not have halachic force because the halacha is not what guides their decision. However, elsewhere I wrote that if somebody reveals a secret to you, you could reveal it. Reveal it. Let's say somebody says, by the way, you should know that my business partner, how oh boy did I get him? I tricked him. I'm about to steal a thousand dollars from him. Says Rabbi Shawais, I wrote that you're allowed to reveal it to somebody else, even though it's uh, against the laws of Tznios, but here it's to save somebody else from harm. But medicine is different. <laughs> In our situation, if someone's life is on the line, <coughs> even if you want to say, um, in other words, this is different. Why is this different? Because this is a, ma- a matter of the medical field. And in the medical field, you can't necessarily reveal information even if it's to save somebody else. Who's that again? By money, he said you could. By money, if it's again just a personal secret that somebody tells you, then you could reveal it. But if it's a medical secret, if someone else's life is on the line, you could reveal it. And even according to the law of the land, you could reveal it. But in the circumstances we said, let's say a doctor knows about a woman, she's not capable of having children. What do you do in that situation? What? Well, Says of Asher Weiss. So let's read that one again. Okay. It's a little bit difficult. Names, well, it's not clear what he's trying to say, but look in the next paragraph. If it's just a matter of being harmed, <laughs> if a doctor is afraid he could get sued, he doesn't have to give up his job. Okay. Now that is in line with the argument we made that a, the, since the, da, the love of Leisamad al Dam is violated, you don't have to give up all your money to violate. Again, he's not being clear. What do you do, Lamaisa, in a situation where a doctor knows that a girl is not capable of having children? And, and he could tell the prospective chasan. By the way, it's only not a matter It of sounds opinion. like that under those circumstances he'd be required to present it to the ethics committee and yeah, let them decide. So. Well, what if they decide, you know, you know, the patient has a right for confidentiality. But doesn't that, isn't that against the halacha? Well, now Rav Asher is saying he doesn't have to give up his job. Well, that, that would be a very difficult circumstance. It's not only giving up his job. It's not only giving up his job. He's going to wind up in jail. He's going to wind up in jail. Is to protect he's going to wind up in jail. Yes, so, but that's what I will follow. But, but he but still has the problem. You're right, he's followed. Okay, now if the ethics committee, you would think under such circumstances, the ethics committee would deem it proper to uh, tell the prospective uh, person, look, you know, not everything is as a meets the eye. He says like this, and in this circumstance, where the doctor knows genetic information, um... The proper way is like this. The doctor should arrange that the cousins should check without revealing why. why. In other words, don't say, the doctor shouldn't say, by the way, there is a heart condition in your family. The doctor should just say, I recommend that you get a screening. Why? That's all I could tell you. He says, or, fine, Okay, you're allowed to shake, so the problem is, uh, you know, you worry about Shaduchim. So, he says, V'yimsa, and find a different way to explain to them why, um, why you're concerned for them, and why you're telling them this, and if you can't sort of trick them, say the following. Someone in the family has this 
issue. I'm not telling you who. I'm not telling you if it's from your mother's side or your father's side. This way, word doesn't get out exactly where the issue is coming from and, and hopefully does not affect that particular family for Shaduchim. So Rav Asher has, again, a different viewpoint than the Tzitzel Yezer. Tzitzel Yezer said very clearly, I think we saw in three Tshuvahs, he called the Chalkas Yaakov, a doctor must reveal not only information that could save someone's wife, life, but information that if somebody would know about, they would refrain from going into the shidduch or, or going into the business partnership. Rav Asher Weiss is much more circumspect Sorry. based on the fact that there are legalities involved, based on the fact that you don't necessarily have to give up your job. If it's a matter of someone's life in danger, then you need to say. If it's a matter of somebody living a compromised life because of it, Sounds like he's recommending going through the ethics committee, although he acknowledges that the ethics committee does not have halachic standing. So, I think the purpose of uh, learning this tshuva is to realize that the opinion of Tzitzel Yezer is not necessarily the only viewpoint. But obviously, if this circumstance ever applies, one should consult a very competent halachic authority. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.